Hi folks, Surat here once again, and it's time to return to Scoggins, Minnesota for Puzzle Agent 2. So let's start. New game. Nelson Tethers, Department of Puzzle Research. Just arrived in Scoggins, Minnesota. There's a weird man staring at me. Some kind of situ thing going on at the local eraser factory. Locals report hearing whispers. Snow must be playing tricks on my eyes. For a second I thought I saw... Yes, in the middle of the first cutscene, the first puzzle. Moon focus. Can Nelson see the unique details of the moon? Rotate the rings of the scope until each ring is locked in place and each column of symbols contains no duplicates. This is pretty much just trial and error. It doesn't really matter where you start. You can put these in any place you want to. Or you can put the first one in any place you want to, but then you've got to make sure that none of these symbols have a match in their uh, columns, like the puzzle said. So, slowly but surely. And you notice how they kind of click in place? Yeah. Let's see. And if you can't see, if just look really carefully in here and you might see the gnome start to appear. Okay, he disappeared. We got out of the way. Oops. There we go. And no hits, no wrong answers, no runs, no trips, no errors. And how? doesn't give you much this time, but why is there a hidden person on the moon? Is this a figment of Nelson's imagination? Could be. He could still be having relapses about that whole astronaut deal from last time, but let's continue with the cutscene. Nice to The eraser here. factory is back open even though foreman Isaac Dabner remains missing. The bureau's marking this case officially closed. Ingram? Oh, hi, Nelson. Thought you'd left for the night. Yeah, say hello to our first new character. He's only marginally important, but we can click around just like last time. And if anything's within the small radius of where we click, just like last time, it will highlight. There are no more puzzles immediately apparent on screen, so we can just talk to Ingram here. And get, well, once again, there's another puzzle. Don't get too used to this because, uh, surprisingly, they didn't put nearly as many puzzles in the conversations as they did last time. How are things going in vegetable crimes? The guys in Leafy Greens are pretty busy, but you know how dull it is in roots and tubers. We haven't had a real case since the Tarot murders back in 76. What I wouldn't give to see some field action like you did. Puzzle division! Wow! Now, you know... Puzzle Division is kind of a wacky, but it's actually kind of plausible that the FBI would have a division that's, you know, dedicated to solving hard puzzles and doing ciphers. It's a stretch, but it could be there. Vegetable Crimes, on the other hand... Jim, Puzzle Division isn't that exciting. 
Come on, Nelson. You were out of the office a whole week. He's got us there. Roots and tubers, huh? I'm not going to make the joke about that being dirty work or anything. No. Are you looking through the Scoggins file? I sure am. Oh, I hope you don't mind. It's just, I'm kind of a fan. You didn't just reopen some eraser factory. You completely cracked that case like it was some first-timer's letter substitution puzzle. Yeah, cracked that case wide open. And you're acting a little creepy there, dude. So, what are you doing in my office? Check it out. I just solved the latest from Japanese puzzle master Hanji Monosaki. It's rated four dragons. Looks like you've got some competition in the puzzle solving department. Yeah, about that. Ah, Monosaki puzzle number 320. Can you solve this four dragon puzzle designed by puzzle master Hanji Monosaki? What is the next number in the sequence? Well, let's see. We got 11, 12, 1, 2. Now, just by sheer brute forcing it, or you could actually deduce the, the uh, pattern, but the next number is 3. Why? Well, these are, well, for lack of a better word, clock hours. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So, 3 o'clock comes next. Bingo. So we're already up to two puzzles solved. We're off to a very rip-roaring start here. So each number represents the hours on the clock starting from 11. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. So now we can continue here. Nice try, Jim, but you see here... Oh, I didn't even notice that. Don't worry, you almost... Hey, Jim, if you like puzzles, maybe you could do me a huge favor. I'm gonna be taking some time off, and I've still got all these tapes from the Scoggins case. You want me to log them into evidence? These tapes must have all the puzzles. Thanks, Jim, and I'll probably be recording more notes while I'm away. No problem. Just mail them back to me and I'll file them through vegetable crimes. Thanks for the help, Jim. Yeah, Nelson. Have a good trip to... wherever. I dubbed the Sir Bootlick. The Bureau's marking this case officially closed, but I can't leave it like this. Just in case the you wonder what he's going to say. Still missing. There has to be some rational explanation for all the things I've seen. It's going to take all my vacation time. I won't be able to relax until I found Isaac Dow and got into the bottom of this case. The only way to do that is to go back to Scoggins, Minnesota. Indeed. I'm finally back in Scoggins. The place is a lot quieter at night. Hi, Bjorn. I don't see any of the familiar townspeople. Bye, Bjorn. I'm going to check into Valda's Inn and get a fresh start on the case in the morning. Okay. Just in case you're curious, same rules apply as last time. Same rules apply this time as they did last time. You pick up gum, gum gives you hints. And let's see, I see a few pieces of it just sitting here. Let's see, any more? Yep, piece up there that I missed. And we can sit here and click around. To make sure there's no more gum anywhere, because gum is important, it buys us hints. Although I won't be using hints. Go figure. But anyway, yes, we are back in Scoggins. 
we will see some new locations, some old locations. The game plays exactly the same as it does the first time. Nelson stands in one spot on the screen until you click on an object he can interact with or an area he can transition to. Then he moves. If puzzles show up, you click on them. People show up, you talk to them. Same old, same old, same old. But now, let's go into Valda's, get ourselves a room for the night, and get ready to further explore the disappearance of Isaac Davner in the morning. Oh my, Mr. Agent Tethers. Gum. 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 Hidden the table. I got it. Any more around here that's just hiding somewhere? No. Before we talk to you, let's check the uh, magnifying glasses. I kind of miss the wooden gnome collection, Miss Garrett. Made the whole place seem creepier. Yes, it did. No negative gnome puzzle this time, huh? So let's check the stove. Stove still working fine, Ms. Garrett? Good, then I just won't go anywhere near it ever again. And he's not kidding. We will never have to mess with that stove again. We really don't have to mess with those shelves either, but hey, looking at them once brings us back to where we, you know, left off. So now let's talk to her and get our room. Good evening, Mrs. Garrett. Oh, dear. I mean, good evening, Agent Tethers. I didn't expect to see the FBI back here in town. Not now that the eraser factory's back up and running. This is just a personal trip. So, she has a puzzle. But let's go ahead and talk to her about all these nifty little topics she has sitting has here. Has anyone heard from the factory foreman, Isaac Davner? What? Who? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I, I mean... I don't recall anyone with that name. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Very nervous acting Valda here. Oh, what about your famous hot dish? I never did get to try your famous hot dish. Ooh, well, have a seat and I can whip up. I mean, we're all out. No, sir, not a scrap of it anywhere. Can't make any hmm. hot dish for the guests just come in from the cold. Oh, that's disappointing. In yeah. more ways than one. Okay, Valda, what's really going on around here? I suppose the factory's still running with no problems? Oh, yeah. Our plant supplies the White House with all of its erasers, don't you know? Yes, ma'am. It's a national treasure. And you helped us get to the bottom of that nasty incident like a real town hero. Well, it was no... Which is why it's so unusual that you'd be back in town again. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. Gum. You know he likes gum. I know he likes gum. Let's see if the town has any since his last visit. Do you know where I can get some chewing gum? Gum? Oh my, no. You won't find a stick of it anywhere in town. Not until spring at the earliest, and maybe not even then. Why do you say that? There have been rumblings in the town council trying to ban it within city limits. But gum's the only thing that helps me concentrate. Yeah, it's all part of the new Keep Scoggins Beautiful campaign. It's just a darn shame. You can see pieces stuck to walls and trees everywhere you look. Hmm, I'll be on the lookout for it. Oh, you know, we have time for this. Now let's see if she actually has a vacancy while she, you know, drums her fingers together and looks around suspiciously. Could I get the same room I had last time? Oh no, oh dear, uh, this is terrible. We've, er, uh, we're completely booked up, I'm afraid. No vacancies. No vacancies? In Scoggins? Oh yeah, lots of, you know, tourists. 
here for the snow and uh, erasers. Look, you can see here for yourself. Uh huh. Martha claims she has all of the room. She has booked all the rooms at the inn. Can you figure out room assignments that will satisfy everyone's request and spare room for Nelson to stay in? There are six rooms at the inn, three on each floor. The guest requests are Mr. Maxwell insisted he stay on the floor above Mrs. LaRue. Miss Dimpleton will not stay on a floor with more men than women, and Mr. Blesson and Mr. Carlwin always get rooms on the same floor. So the first one is easy. Maxwell wants to stay above LaRue. Dimpleton will not stay in a room with more men than women. So we need to have her stay on a room with another woman. Or room with, you, you know what I mean. The floor has to have two women in it. And these two always book on the same floor. Which leaves Nelson down here. All by his little lonesome. And, of course, Mr. Maxwell's request to stay on the floor above Mrs. LaRue helps put the rest of the guests in place. Miss Templeton's request for more women than men on a floor requires her to be on the same floor as LaRue on the lower floor. Carlman and Blesson want to stay on the same floor, and the top is the only room with two beds left. Nelson fills in the last remaining room. It looks like Bingo. there's a room available. Hmm, well, uh, isn't this embarrassing? Ah, that room is being, uh, fumigated. Ghosts. Ghosts? No, not ghosts. Uh, the, the other thing. Bed bugs? Oh, heavens no. Of course it's not bed bugs. It's, uh, uh, painters. The room's being fumigated for painters? Don't be silly, Agent Tethers. I mean to say, the room's being painted. Uh... Huh. I'm sorry, but you'll just have to look somewhere else. But it's freezing, and this is the only hotel in... Yeah, no vacancies. You'll just have to go outside. Which is a hint. But it is a hint we will have to follow next time. So until then, take care, folks. See you later. <laughs>